Hello, and welcome to Insight.Tech Talk, where we explore the latest IoT, AI, edge, and network technology trends and innovations. I'm your host, Christina Cardoza, Editorial Director of Insight.Tech, and today we're talking to Quanergy's Gerald Becker about advancements in 3D LiDAR. Hey, Gerald, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having us. Before we jump into the conversation, if you could just give us a brief background of yourself and the company, that would be great. So a little bit about myself, Gerald Becker. I've been in the security space for a couple of decades now, a little over 20 years. And uh, uh, I've been in every facet of the industry from being an end user, a systems integrator, um, and even more so to more latest at times, I've been on the manufacturing side, which is where I found uh, really found my stride. Uh, I've been with Quanji uh, just shy of four years now. Uh, Quadri is a manufacturer of 3D LiDAR sensing hardware, and we're also a developer of software. Uh, we were founded in 2012, and we were one of the uh, one of the first LiDAR companies to actually come out in the space commercially, uh, originally uh, targeting autonomous vehicles, right, the holy grail. Uh, so we were one of the first companies to, to come out commercially and be able to offer a, a turnkey solution to uh, various markets, which we'll go into here in a bit. Uh, so really looking forward to this dis discussion. Thank you, Christina. Yeah, absolutely. And excited to jump in. You mentioned the company's been around since 2012. So obviously, LiDAR, 3D LiDAR, it's not a new technology, but I feel like it's been gaining a lot more interest lately. And, you know, you said it started in auto, um, automated driving, but now it's spanning across different industries and different businesses. So I'm just curious if we could start off, um, you know, talking about what is 3D LiDAR exactly when we're talking, how does it go beyond automated cars and what are the pain points that you know businesses are trying to solve with it today this is the fun stuff right so there's a there's a lot of applications for lidar predominantly everybody knows lidar being used for automotive and robotics and stuff like that uh, also terrestrial mapping right so putting these on drones and mapping environments to understand you know is there a pyramid hidden behind these rainforests and stuff like that right a lot of cool applications uh, that have been out there for years and years. So LiDAR is absolutely not a new technology. It's been around for decades, very, very long time. It's not until I would say the past 10 years that we've really started going beyond the comfort zone of what LiDAR can do. So in my in my role within the organization, I head up the, the physical security, smart space and smart city uh, market uh, sectors. And uh, with that being said, there's so much applicability as far as what you could do with 3D LiDAR in those three markets because they've always been uh, confined to a 2D space, like what we're seeing on this camera. In those spaces, they've always predominantly used like radar, camera, other types of IoT sensors that have always either been uh, 1D or 2D technologies. But now, with the advent of 3D technologies and the integration ecosystem that we've developed in the past few years, we now provided so much more flexibility to see beyond the norm, see beyond two dimensions, see beyond what's been the common custom of, of sensing in the space. So for security, we're doing some very, very big things. In security, because they've predominantly been using radar and camera and video analytics, 3D sensing is now being able to provide additional capabilities where we provide depth, where we provide volume, but even more so in 360 with centimeter level accuracy. Now, what that does for security applications is that that brings down the TCO advantage, or I'm sorry, it, it increases the TCO advantage compared to old legacy technology, but it decreases the amount of false alarms to actually activate and track and see what is real and what is it, right? So in these legacy technologies, anytime that there's a movement or an analytic tracks a potential breach or something like that, automatically starts triggering events and send them to the alert office to say, hey, there's an alarm, there's an alarm. That's a big problem. There's thousands and thousands of alarms coming in because the AI or the analytic, the intelligent video doesn't under, understand how to decipher, hey, that's just an animal walking by. It's not a perpetrator coming up to the fence, right? So with our sensors, we're able to provide 98% detection, tracking, and classification accuracy in 3D spaces. So when we marry up with other technologies, such as a PTZ camera, where a camera may be focused into a specific zone, our 3D LiDAR sensor sees in that whole space. So we detect an object, we tell the camera, hey camera, move over here and keep tracking this object in this space. Once again, with centimeter level accuracy, we're able to slew to cube cameras and provide that intelligence to the security operations. From the flow management side, which is more on the business intelligence side, we're able to provide a higher level, deep understanding of what's going on within spaces, such as retail. We can understand where consumers are 
going through their journey, what path they're taking, what products are they touching, the queue lines, how long are they? Even more so, much easier than you could with traditional ways of doing it, like the whole camera-based or stereoscopic ways. We're able to eliminate up to seven cameras with one sensor of ours to be able to give you quite a bit of coverage in that space. Once again, in 3D, so instead of sticking camera here, 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 and stitching them all together, you put one LiDAR sensor that gives you full 360, and you're able to see that whole space and see how people interact in these spaces as they're touching or experiencing different, uh, you know, if it's at a theme park to understand what is it a person's doing in line or at a, at a museum to see how they're interacting with this digital space. We're able to provide so many cool outcomes that you've just never been able to do with 2D sensing technology. So when you ask me like, what what is new and what, what can you with 3D? We've been, we barely started tapping into like the capabilities of what you do with 3D. Yeah, and everything that you're saying, obviously that depth of dimension, um, you know, and that 360 view, that is something that's going to benefit businesses and that you really want to strive for to get the complete picture. But like you said, it's not something that we've seen businesses really be utilizing until now. So what's been happening in this space? Has there been any recent advancements or innovations that makes this a little bit more accessible to these types of businesses? So I think the biggest wall to adoption was the ecosystem of technology integrations, right? So as I stated, a lot of these companies have uh, predominantly been going after automotive, the holy grail, and that's typically been to like OEMs, people that take the sensor, develop custom integrations and stick it into the hood or fender of a vehicle. No, that's not what we've done. So we've pivoted and we've gone after a different market where we've aligned with the who's who from physical security integration management platforms, video management software solutions, cameras, business intelligence, physical access control systems, where we've they've used our sensors and they've integrated our sensors into their platforms to provide all these event to action workflows, all these different outcomes that have just not been available in the past, right? So this is opening a whole new level of understanding and all new capabilities to solve old problems, but even more so new problems, right? So the so what we've seen is now that we've got the integrations to all these tier one partners in these spaces, is that, that that's giving uh, end customers and end users the ability to now explore how to solve old problems in different ways and get higher levels of accuracy that they've never been able to do before. Now, you've mentioned uh, a lot of different technologies and, you know, these companies who have been doing 2D sensing with their cameras and their other sensors, how can they now leverage the existing infrastructure that they have and add 3D LiDAR on top of it or work with Clonardry with their existing infrastructure? Or does it take a little bit more investment in hardware and tooling to be able to integrate some of these and get the benefits? Yes and no. So as I stated in the previous question, we do have a large ecosystem of technology partners that we've integrated with. So I would say that nine times out of 10 off the shelf, we can integrate with a lot of the stuff that's already out there, but we're very fluid in how we're able to work with partners. You know, you can integrate to us directly through your camera, through a VMS platform, through our open API or third party GPIO boxes, which is basically nothing more than ethernet box where we could push a command directly to it and then activate a siren alarm or whatever it may be. So the other side of it too, is that we're not trying to go completely greenfield, right? So um, I, I'm not trying to discount a lot of the technologies out there, but I will say a layered approach to any approach is probably your best route because there's not a single technology in the world that can solve all use cases. If someone's selling you on that, please turn around and run because it just can't be done. But when you put together the best of breed solutions together in your ecosystem or in your deployment, you're gonna get the best outcome from every sensor. Case in point with cameras, we don't see like cameras do, right? So we don't capture any personal identifiable information. When I explain what LiDAR sees, I always uh, revert back to like my favorite movie of all time, The Matrix. Remember when Neo saw the ones and zeros dropping from the sky when he saw Agent Smith down the hall? So that's how we see. We don't see like cameras do, where I can tell Christina that you have glasses and a white blouse on, or that I have a black you know, polo shirt on. You can't see that. To us, everything looks like a 3D silhouette with depth and volume in 360. Now, that's where we then partner with 2D imaging technologies, such as a camera, like your Bosch's, your Axis, your Fleers, your Hanwha's, big companies that help us see. So when we do need to identify, hey, there's a bad actor with a black polo that's eventually potentially going to break through this fence, that camera helps us decipher that. But when you need to actually detect, track, and classify, 
When you marry those technologies, that's when you open up new outcomes that you can't do with just a camera. So for instance, when you use, let's say, traditional pan tail zoom uh, auto tracking on a camera that's embedded, they'll put a bounty box around the person and it'll track that person in the scene. The issue is with traditional 2D technology and auto tracking that's embedded on the camera is that when that person goes between an object or another area, camera doesn't know what's, what's happening. It doesn't see what's going on in that environment. But if you have enough of our lasers shooting throughout the space and we're seeing up and down aisles, halls, parking spaces, whatever that obstruction may be, we're able to accurately detect the object and we tell the camera, hey, camera, stay focused on this wall because we know the person is behind the wall. Then when the person comes from behind the wall and into the view of the camera, we're still telling the camera, keep tracking that person. That's Mr. Bad Guy. So we go from wall to guy with a black shirt on and we're tracking him all throughout. That's the beautiful thing about our solution too, is that we provide a mesh architecture, right? So unlike having to stitch multiple technologies and track from scene to scene to scene to scene to tile, if you have enough lighters in a space, as long as the lasers overlap with one another, it creates like this massive digital twin. So you could literally zoom in and pan around and track all throughout, up and down corridors, up and down hallways, other sides of walls, you know, around a tree, around whatever it may be. That's the power of our mesh architecture is that it gives you the flexibility that you just never been able to do with other technologies. I love this whole idea of partnering with other, um you know, organizations and experts in this space and being able to get the best outcomes from each sensor and utilize all this technology. But how do you make sure that now you have this all together? It's not information overload, that you're getting data that makes sense and that you can make actions on and, you know, do decisions. We're working with a global data center company who came to us with a very specific problem. Um, they told us at any given time, or actually not at any given time, within a 33-week period of time and testing one of their sites, they were generating over 178 alarms, 178,000 alarms, right, to be exact. Now, this is by definition needle in the haystack when I tell you only two of those were real alarms, right? So when you think of the operation to acknowledge an alarm within a security practice, it's like click, next, review, that is in it, delete. Click, next, review, delete. Try doing that 178,000 times to find that one time when that disgruntled employee that got fired for smoking or doing something when he shouldn't be at the property comes with that USB drive, plugs into the network and takes down a billion dollar organization, right? They knew they had a problem. So in that respect, they tested everything under the sun from you know, AI, radar, fence shaking technology, underground cable, everything under the sun. So they finally landed on our, our solution. So they did a shootout, one of their best sites with our site. So same time, time frame of testing their best site with our site, they came up with 22,000 alarms on their best site. Our site generated five actual alarms. And I, I'm getting goosebumps when I tell you this. They told us that that would have saved them 3,600 hours in pointless investigation work that they can reallocate to other capital expense, other operational expense. We're buying more solutions, more CPUs from you guys or, or more LIDARs from us, right? There's just so much that they're able to see. Now, the idea is that we dramatically decrease the operational effect of those legacy technologies to make them only aware of what was important to them, right? So that was a key value proposition there, but even more so by tying into all those other technologies, it made it more effective. So when we did track those five alarms, we did accurately track the camera to de decipher, is that a good guy, bad guy? Is that a real alarm? Absolutely. So we're able to decrease the operational expense as far as someone having to click next review, click next review, click next review of thousands and thousands of times to actually only work on something that's important. So there's so many different outcomes and effects that to the positive side that I could go on and on for. <laughs> that's great. And I'm sure when you're looking at hundreds and thousands of different um, reviews, it you can make mistakes. You're probably just going through the motions and something could be happening that you're just like, all right, click next, click next. I just want to get through all of these alarms and alerts. So, so that's great that you guys are able to pinpoint exactly what's happening. You've talked a lot about uh, sort of infrastructure surveillance and you talked about the customer behavior within shopping aisles and things like that. I'm curious if you could provide us with, if you have any more customer use cases or examples of how you've helped somebody, what the problem that business was happening and what the result was as the result of using the 3D LiDAR and working with Clonergy. 
we deal with various markets. In fact, uh, one of our bigger markets, too, is the flow management smart space, uh, smart city uh, market. So uh, we just did a webinar with one of our customers, uh, YVR, Vancouver International Airport, where you know they talked about their application with LiDAR and how LiDAR was able to uh, give them the accuracy levels that they needed to how to better engage the guest journey, that curb to gate experience from airside, landside operations, but even more so is how to get the flow of people in through and out to their final destination. There's a lot of bottlenecks, a lot of choke points as you get dropped off by your family, by taxi or by Uber, as you go to check in, get your ticket, as you go through CATSA or TSA to go through security, then finally as you go to duty free or a restaurant to get your food, then finally when you get to the boarding gates, right? There's a lot of areas where there's choke points that create friction as far as the experience and the journey that one takes throughout that environment. Now. As I mentioned earlier, I, I don't want to talk down on other sensing technology, but let's just say in this environment, we were able to replace up to seven cameras in that mar in that uh, environment with one LiDAR sensor. And unlike cameras in that space that had to be overhead looking straight down, giving them a limited field of view, we gave them so much coverage, right? So one of our long range sensors alone could do 140 meters in diameter of continuous detection, tracking and classification. That's equivalent to about three U.S. football fields side by side, right? So that's quite a bit of coverage you can do. Now, when you look at it from the TCO advantage that we provide the airports, the the the, the data centers, the theme parks, the casinos, the, the ports, I mean, the list goes on and on, is that we dramatically decrease the overall cost in the deployment. So when you were to look at it at, the, at a high level, I always use this analogy. I used to hear this when I was very young from more senior sales guys is that whole iceberg theory, right? Right? You can't look at it at the top of the iceberg and put sensor to sensor what this costs. You know, camera may be only a few hundred, while ladder may be a few thousand plus, you know, software and et cetera, et cetera. But the underlying cost is beneath the iceberg, right? What's it going to take to install these seven to eight devices on this side versus one device, right? You look at labor, you look at cost of conduit, cable, licensing, the maintenance that's required to deploy that, right? So that's when it really becomes really cost effective when you understand the complexity of installation legacy technology versus new technology in that area. Hence why Vancouver decided to start deploying. They got over 28 uh, sensors in one terminal. They're expanding to other terminals now. So there's quite a bit of growth there that we're doing with that airport, but we got over 22 international airports that we're currently deployed in. Now, here's another interesting one as well. So here in the, in the States, in Florida, there's a lot of drawbridges that go up and they go down. They go up and they go down. And it's susceptible to you know, liability issues where people may fall in, vehicles may fall into the waterways, and unfortunately there have been fatalities, which is a horrible thing. So what we've done is that uh, they did initial tests with our LiDAR solutions, and they were using LiDAR on both sides of the bridges to basically track if an object comes into the scene, in this case, a person or a vehicle. And if that person or vehicle comes into the scene, hold the bridge from going up and notify the bridge tender in the kiosk to say, do not let the bridge up, which ultimately would bring down the liability concerns that they had in that area. So now with the use of, of LiDAR and, you know, confidently coming out of that, that POC, very high success, they're now deploying these across several bridges in Florida. So when you look up at a, at a drawbridge now in Florida, you'll see our sensors deployed. That's helping bring down the liability concerns and potential issues of fatalities occurring or, God forbid, a vehicle falling into the waterway, which could happen quite a bit. Yeah, and I'm sure that not only benefits the operator who's operating those drawbridges, but also the comfortability of the people driving over those bridges. My husband absolutely hates driving over the bridges and that's one of his biggest fears. So I'll have to let him know next time we're in Florida that, uh, you know, he has nothing to worry about. There's 3D LiDAR <laughs> and explain all that. I'll have him listen to this podcast on the for drive sure, over for there. Sure. But I'm curious, um, you know, cause you mentioned this whole ecosystem of partners that you're able to work with to be able to do all of this stuff. So when you're talking about some of these examples and I should mention Insight.Tech Talk and Insight.Tech as a whole, we are sponsored by Intel, but I'm curious how partnerships, especially Intel technology and that Intel partnership, how does that help you be successful in these use cases and in these customer examples? Spot on. So let me start off by saying this. Um, unlike the other, the herd of LiDAR that's heavily focused on, you know, 
you know, GPU processing and, and they've got a ton of data that they need to process. We're a little bit different, right? So our sensors are purpose built for flow management and security applications. You know, they don't need to go into a fender of a vehicle and shoot tons of lasers all over the place and gather and, and, and push a ton of data through the pipe as far as throughput requirements for the sensor. You know, our sensor are purpose built, which means that, you know, we have the best angular resolution as far as capturing objects within the space, but ultimately, we have a CPU-based architecture, which means it's more cost-effective, it's highly scalable, but even more so, as we align with Intel, we provide you know, the best-of-breed solution out there for not only cost, accuracy, and deployment uh, uh, capabilities in the space. So you know, that, that's where we stand apart from a lot of the other Tom, Dick, and Harry's in LiDAR, is that it really is a solution you can take off the shelf now and deploy. There is no custom integration you're gonna need to do for six months to a year to get it to where you need to. As I explained earlier, there's four ways to work with us. At the camera level, at the VMS level, at our API, or through, through a, a, a third-party GPI or Ethernet box. And then with our partnership with, with Intel, we, we, we come to find out new use cases on a daily basis. I just finished a call with the retail team, literally uh, 30 minutes ago, where we were exploring you know, brick and mortar and warehouse automation and stuff like that, where we could provide you know, 3D sensing beyond the traditional way of looking at those type of spaces with other sensors, right? So there's so much to unfold there, but even more so, the partnership with Intel makes it invaluable for us to, as we continue to scale and grow in this space. That's really exciting, especially all these different industries you've been talking about. We've been writing on Inside.Tech a lot about how they're using computer vision, AI, and other automated technologies to be able to improve their operations and their efficiencies and, and workflow. But, um, you know, excited to see how 3D LiDAR is going to come into the fold and how that's going to even transform these industries even further. So I'm curious, since we talked about in the beginning, that we've really only hit the beginning of the use cases or where we could go with this. Where, how do you anticipate this space to evolve? Are there any um, you know, emerging trends or technologies that you see coming out that you're excited about? There's quite a few use cases already that we've untapped, but there's so much more that's still yet to be explored, right? So um, at, the very, uh, at the very beginning, I talked a little bit about orchestration, and we're able to marry with multiple sensors to create different outcomes. That's gonna continue to grow and expand with additional sensor integrations, right? So we integrate with the license plate recognition. If there's a hit, Boom, we can then continuously track within a parking lot. But then there's the advent of AI, what's going on with large learning uh, uh, models and, and, and all the other stuff that's coming out. And then cloud, right? So there's just so much there that that's just hasn't been touched, right? From the AI side, there's a ton of stuff that's being done right now on computer vision and understanding much more as far as what's being caught within the scene to understand more generalities that can create different outcomes and tell a different story that ultimately get you to the end result. Is it good guy? Is it bad guy? Is it good workflow or is it not, right? I think that there's so much more that can be done with LiDAR as we marry with other AI technologies that will provide these additional outcomes that are just not being done yet, right? So we're still in very early stages, I would say, uh, for LiDAR in the AI arena, but as it pertains to a lot of the physical security applications and BI st stuff of that, it's already been proven and, and deployed globally with quite a few different customers around the world. So definitely excited about that, but there's just so much more to peel back as far as what we do with cloud, with AI, that that's really just a massive opportunity in this space. Yeah, I'm excited to see where else this goes. And I encourage all of our listeners too to, to follow along as Quantergy leads this space and what else you guys come up with and how else you guys are, are transforming our industries. Um, before we go, Gerald, is there anything else that you wanted to add, um, you know, any final thoughts or key takeaways you wanted to leave our listeners with? I've always been kind of the guy who always adopts the new platforms, you know, once I hear from other people and like, hey, I'll be the last one to create a new social media account and I'll wait for what everyone thinks and stuff like that. But I think that with LiDAR, similarly, like some people may be you know, a little nervous of adopting new technology, even more so going something out of their comfort zone. I think now, more so than any other time is a time to start testing. We're past that early early phase, you know, the kick the tire phase. There's so many deployments, so many reference accounts, so many people that are now talking about the value and how this has increased, you know, their workflows, that has increased and provided additional value, has decreased the false alarms and operational effectiveness for them. I think now more so than ever is a time to act and start testing, start 
asking the questions. What can LiDAR do for me that I haven't been able to do before? How can I use LiDAR in my current operations or my current deployments that I just never been able to, 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 to see with these other technologies? And look at your existing you know, use cases or your existing business cases and see if I had depth, if I had volume, if I had centimeter level accuracy, how could that improve my day-to-day -day workflow, my job, and provide more value to the organization as a whole? So I would say, if that's a, if that's where you're at now, reach out to me. You can find me on LinkedIn, Gerald Becker. You can find me or reach out to me directly on email, gerald.becker at quantergy.com. I'd love to have a chat with you. You know, even if it's a 10, 15 minute conversation, I'm sure it will lead to a lot more fruitful discussion after that. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll make sure to link out to your your LinkedIn and um, you know, accounts for the company so that if anybody listening wants to get in touch, wants to learn more about this 3D LiDAR space, you know, we'll make it easy for you guys to access. So just want to thank you again, Gerald, for, for joining us today. And thank you to our listeners. Until next time, this has been the Insight.Tech Talk. Mm -hmm.